I'm West Valley City Mayor Mike Winder, and I invite you to join me on a stroll down memory lane, or to be more exact, a stroll down 3500 South, 100 years ago. We're here on the southeast corner of 3500 South and 3200 West was the site of the old Granger Ward House, the great gathering place of our community. Of course, now it's a Chevron Holiday Oil and a Wiener Schnitzel and Wendy's. But 100 years ago, this was the happening place to be in the west side of the valley. So on the southeast corner of 35th South and 3200 West, tragedy struck. 8 p.m., March 7, 1905. A gas heater exploded during a dance at the Granger Ward building. The walls collapsed, killing 21-year-old organist Nellie Mackey. The photograph you see is the inside of the building showing extensive damage from the tragedy, which made the building unusable. The building was torn down, and within three weeks, ground was broken for a new church on the same site. After the tragic explosion at the Granger Ward in 1905, the community rallied to replace the damaged building with a grand meeting house. This two-story yellow brick assembly hall was a landmark on the southeast corner of 32nd West and 35th South until it was torn down in 1960. The 20th century saw the communities of Granger and Hunter mature from just a scattering of farms west of the Jordan River into real cohesive communities with schools, churches like this one, and traditions. Chesterfield would also take shape in the early 20th century, and landmarks such as the new Granger Ward Meeting House, shown here in February 1914, would help create a sense of place. President Joseph F. Merrill dedicated the Granger Ward Chapel on February 22, 1912. In 1918, the chapel had the honor of being the first building in the west side with electric lights. The ward boundaries at the time extended from the Jordan River on the east to 4800 West Street on the west. LDS Church President Thomas S. Monson recalled attending many meetings in the Granger Ward building as a boy when he would come out to Granger to stay on his grandfather Thomas Condy's farm. He noted that the large curtains were used to divide up the spacious rooms into various Sunday school classes. Brick Mason Manasseh Smith did such a good job with the building that demolition of the chapel in 1960 was especially difficult. The old Hunter Ward building on 3500 South and 6000 West was the religious center for the Mormons in the Hunter area. It was also the center of numerous community activities, dances, ball games, and dinners. The Hunter Ward, when it was organized, had 137 members in 1888. Membership continued to grow, necessitating additions to the original structure in the decades ahead. Wealthy cattle and sheep rancher Ira Wainwright Benyon built the impressive two-story red brick home at 4396 South, 3200 West Street in 1906. He named it Hay Warden after his father's boyhood home in Wales, and eight of his 15 children were born in the house. Benyon died in 1927, and the home was put on the National Register of Historic Places in 1980. Today, Lamar and Gundy Jones take wonderful care of that beautiful historic home. Pictured from left to right in this picture, Will Bangeter Hall's children Norm, the future governor, Gleneth, Marion, and Naomi Bangeter on 3200 West in 1939. William served as bishop of the LDS Granger Ward from 1920 to 1933. As bishop, he helped move the old tithing barn, landscape and improve the grounds of the Granger Ward, and encouraged Ruth and Nathan Hale to write an original play since the ward budget could not afford royalties. Their home on 3837 South, 3200 West still stands today. The Bangeter family first came to Granger in 1891, and William was a second generation resident. His children and grandchildren would also live in the community. This is how the Bangeter home appeared in December of 1920. In pioneer times, seasonal crossings over the Jordan River on the ice were common as there were very few bridges at the time. As the settlements over Jordan grew, more sophisticated bridges were required. In 1905, a substantial bridge was built over the Jordan River at 3300 South, connecting what was essentially the main street of Hunter and Granger with the rest of the Salt Lake Valley. Notice the shadow of the photographer in the foreground. In 1905, when this bridge over the Jordan River was built, 3300 South Street was known as 1400 South Street. Street numbers were modernized by the Salt Lake City Commission in 1916, and 12th South became 21st South, 13th South became 27th, 14th South became 33rd South, and so forth. The construction of a bridge over the Jordan River at 21st South Street was another engineering feat of the era. This photograph was taken as the bridge neared completion on May 9, 1917. Ethel Schaefer Holmberg and her sons Wayne and Chester 
Wait for a train at the station at 1950 West, 3500 South. On October 10, 1917, the 9.7 mile Magna Branch of the Salt Lake and Utah Interurban Railway opened for service with eight daily trains connecting Westside residents with the main line that ran from Salt Lake to Payson. The main line was called the Orem Line after developer A.J. Orem. By the late 1920s, the main line supported 18 trains a day carrying passengers, mail and freight, as well as students to and from Cypress High School in Magna. The trains were abandoned for financial reasons and the last run was on March 1, 1946. You know, the first paved road on the west side of the valley was 35th South. This view is of 3500 South in 1916 looking east at the intersection of 35th South and 3200 West, right by the Granger Ward House. You can see how it looks today, quite a bit different. You know, between 1915 and 1918, drains were dug to eliminate swampy sections of this road, and then a concrete surface was poured when the drains were complete. And 35th South, for many years dusty in the summer and muddy in the spring, became our first paved street on the west side, and a part of the coast-to-coast -coast Lincoln Highway. Snow plows were first used in 1925. And as you see 35th South today, with Max running up the center lane and bustling businesses on either side, a lot of traffic from the horse and buggy days of 1916. One of the major chores on the farm was threshing, the separation of the grain from the stalks and the husks. The owners of the steam thresher loaned it to farmers for 14 bushels of each 100 they threshed. This photograph shows the last visit of the steam thresher to the farms of Granger and Hunter in 1937. This photograph shows 40th West when it was still a dirt road, about the year 1920. You know, speaking of the 1920s, my grandpa Ned Winder used to tell me how he and Rich would lay down on 41st South at the bottom of Winder Lane to be warm on the pavement in the spring, and about every 30 minutes or so they'd have to get out of the road because the automobile would be rumbling through. Again, that was West Valley in the 1920s when a few roads were paved, like 41st, and some, like 40th West, wasn't paved yet. Seen here on their Granger farm are Grover Hill, Betsy Hill, Vinnie Hill, William Hill, and their father A.J. Hill. Alexander Joseph Hill married Betsy Ann Bodden in 1884, and they lived in Granger for the rest of their lives. He was superintendent of the North Jordan Canal, constable of Granger, and later justice of the peace. This early 1920s image shows Greek residents from Garfield out in the Magna area who came for a picnic on the Jordan River shore in Chesterfield. Although encouraged by the Kimball and Richards Company, the original settlement of Chesterfield in 1914 did not last. It was the homes built during the 1930s, during the Great Depression, that gave Chesterfield its first permanent residence. During the Great Depression, 110 families built houses in the Chesterfield area near 21st South and the Jordan River with the help of the County Welfare Department. The conditions of these Chesterfield homes were extremely poor. Most dwellings consisted of only two rooms and lacked both central heat and bathtubs. This is one of the earliest homes built in Chesterfield at 1364 West Parkway Boulevard as it appeared in the 1960s. Charles John Lambert is on the horse in front of the hay load with son Joseph and nephews George H. Lambert and George L. Woodbury assisting in loading the hay. At that time, loading piles of alfalfa onto a hay wagon was a ritual that occurred throughout Granger and Hunter every June, July, and September. In this image, we see Rulin and Newell Mackey taking in a load of hay in the 1930s. The farmers of the area would leave at 6 a.m., stopping at the Fairborn Scales at 3200 West and 35th South to weigh the load and continue into town to sell the hay. It was mostly the city cows that got this choice hay. Granger's first baseball team, as you see left to right here, is Bill Lehman, Clem Bolton, their coach Ted Hill, Ted Bolton, Smith Bodden, and Bill War. On the second row we see Wayne Irving, Frank Bolton, Severn Smith, Conrad Gerber, Ren Butcher, and Ike Gerber. They belong to the Farm Bureau League and traveled all over the county making quite a name for Granger with their successes. Now their neighbors in Hunter were not to be outdone, and Hunter also had a very good baseball team in the 1940s, consisting of many brothers and cousins of the prominent Rushton family. The photograph of this team, taken at Hunter Park, there on 36 South and 6,000 West, shows their coach, Albert Rushton, in the upper left, Lawrence Rushton in the center, Lewis Rushton, far right with the mitt, Sly Rushton, the bottom right, and other family members. You know, plays were a popular activity in the community, and in 1937, Ruth and Nathan Hale were asked to write a play for the Granger Ward. 
They didn't have enough monies for royalties that year, so they had to write their own play. It Shall Keep Thee is what it was called, and it starred the following actors that you see here from left to right. On the first row, Liston Parr, Nathan Hale himself, and Maureen Inkley. On the second row, we see Sam Bangader, Ruth Nielsen, Glenn Todd, Phyllis Park, and LaRue Latimer. The Hales would go on to operate theaters in California and Utah, and of course later come home to West Valley City. The spacious basement of the Granger Ward building held numerous social activities in the community in those early days, like this April Fool's Day dinner in 1947. Dances were usually held every Friday evening when the hall would be packed with young and old. Everybody danced. Cold orange cider and refreshments were served in a little room at the north end of the hall known as the Cider Room. In 1932, Milton Orr established the Orr Feed Mill on 3600 West across from the future Granger High School. Here Mr. Orr engaged in milling, buying, and processing grain for seed, feed, and dairy mix. In 1940, he moved the business to the northeast corner of 36 West and 3500 South. His son Max Orr helped carry on the business, which grew to include feed, seed, coal, hay, and fertilizers. They reported serving customers from as far away as Tremont and towns on the Nevada border. Many in the community remember the Old Cannon Store, which was located at the northeast corner of 40th West and 35th South. They upgraded their storefront in the 1920s, as seen in some of these images. The store is seen in these photographs both before and after the renovations. As the only grocery store for miles in its day, the small store included dry goods, house dresses, hardware, meats brought in by Worthland Meats, and penny candy, which was popular with the children of the nearby Monroe School. Most items were located behind the counter, and customers can remember how Peggy Cannon would hum and sing as she helped gather the items on their list. At noon, the Cannons would also make hamburgers that they sold for five cents. The store closed when Mrs. Cannon retired in 1956. Here's a business I'm familiar with. You know, back in 1880, great-great-great-grandpa John R. Winder founded the Winder Dairy and made the first deliveries. The dairy was originally headquartered at 27th South and 4th East in Mill Creek. Due to a bull weevil infestation on the east side of the valley, the Winder family began buying farmland around 4400 West and 4100 South beginning in 1910. In 1919, a grandson of the founder, Jack Winder, started the J.R. Winder Dairy at 2470 West, 3500 South, where Grizzly Plaza now stands, and he delivered dairy products in the areas not covered by the original business. In the meantime, Jack's brothers, George and Ed, started the Winder Brothers Dairy at 4400 West and 41st South, delivering products to the Magna and Garfield area to the west. On the 4th of July, 1931, all three dairies combined to the present location on 4400 West. This 1941 panorama shows General Manager George Winder by his car, with nephews Rich and Ned Winder in the center of the group behind him. Another nephew, uh, David, or Jers Winder as we call him in the family, sits on the bumper of the milk truck. He would grow up to be a federal judge and to swear in the very first West Valley City Mayor and Commission many years later. In 1939, Al War opened Granger Cold Storage at 3550 West on 35th South. had a capacity of 185 lockers. In 1948, the capacity of the plant expanded to 550 lockers and was renamed the War Locker Plant. Back in these early days of electric refrigeration, owning a freezer was a luxury, so people would rent a frozen locker here and come get their pot roast and steaks and other things out of their meat locker. Here's a fun shot of Utah's 13th governor, Norm Bangader, who was born on, in Granger on January 4, 1933, and grew up right on 3200 West. Here he is as a young boy riding his tricycle in the 1930s. Bangader would later represent the area in the Utah House of Representatives from 75 to 85, and was governor of our great state from 1985 to 1993. The 59th District Schoolhouse was completed in 1903, it is at 40th West and 35th South. Also known as the West Granger School, it was named after a major extension in 1909 to honor America's fifth president, James Monroe. Originally, Monroe School had only one principal and one teacher. In 1914, Monroe was one of the first schools in the state to add a junior high program for the older students. This shot shows the expanded Monroe School as it appeared in 1916. Also seen here on the right is a school wagon, a forerunner of the school bus. This wagon would travel the old farm roads, picking up students each morning and later taking them home. 
Drivers would have big rocks or bricks that their wives had heated nestled in the straw to keep the children's feet warm in the winter. The Whittier School was the first school in Hunter. This school was completed in 1905 at 5975 West on 35th South. Originally called the 50th District School, it was renamed the Hunter School in 1906 and then the Whittier School in 1908. A 1909 addition enlarged the school and is seen in this 1916 photograph. It was expanded again in 1939 and 1955. Here we see the 1919 class of the Whittier School showing the diverse age groups that were taught together under one building. Kerry Larson was the principal at the time and served from 1918 to 1920. And in 1923, a 24-year-old educator named Harold B. Lee was named principal and a teacher at the school. Lee taught at Whittier until 1925 and later became president of the LDS Church. This cute little building is the Dewey School at 2200 West on 35th South. It was abandoned once the Monroe School opened in 1908. The school reported truancy issues back in the old days with some of the older boys who would often wander off to Decker Lake to play during the school day. The building was vacant when Newell Beeman took this photograph in 1916. Now, in 1917, the property was sold to John Wendell for a whopping $359. This 1920s photograph shows Alexander Joseph Hill and Betsy Ann Bodden Hill in front of their old barn, which for years was a Granger landmark that was torn down in 1962 to make way for a shopping center. The Hill farmstead was next door to Jacob Hunter's at 2700 West on 35th South, in the area where Market Street and City Hall now is. In August of 1937, a 17-year-old son of William and Isabel Bengeter, Sam Bengeter, climbed to the top of the old Jacob Hunter barn to take this photograph of a typical Granger threshing scene. The tall Hunter barn from which the photograph was taken was a landmark for miles around. In the east, Mount Olympus and the Wasatch Mountains are visible. On the upper right of the photograph, a power pole carries many wires along 2700 West, which is sometimes called Pole Line Road. Joining me for a special historic Mayor's Video Report. Instead of being on top of the Jacob Hunter Barn, I'm on top of the Embassy Suites Hotel. The view of Mount Olympus is the same, but the rest of West Valley City has changed quite a bit.